He was the most famous explorer of his time. He crossed mighty rivers, scaled treacherous mountains, and endured scorching deserts. His actions would change Europe forever. He was Marco Polo. Inspiration of Explorations. Marco was born 1254 in Venice, Italy. He was raised in an upper class home by his aunt and uncle who taught him math, science, and trade. He grew to be a tough, loyal, and observant young man. Before he was born, his father Niccolo and his uncle Mafio set off on a trade operation to the Middle East. Bandits diverted them off course and they crossed paths with a group of Chinese ambassadors who brought the two Venetians to the court of Kublai Khan, China's emperor. Khan, being a man of great curiosity, was very interested in the two Europeans. They spent days exchanging culture, beliefs, and gifts. Khan was especially intrigued by Christianity. He requested that the two brothers return to Venice and fetch 100 Christian scholars, along with oil from the lamp of the Holy Sepulchre. To ensure their safe passage and return, Khan gave them two golden tablets, which provided them with free transportation and food. Marco was 15 years old when his father and uncle finally returned from their expedition. Upon their return, they found that Pope Clement IV had died. He was the only person who was allowed access to the Holy Lamp. Their return to China was severely delayed as a new pope had to be elected. Two years later, the new pope, Gregory X, agreed to help. He could only send two of the 100 requested missionaries. The Polos, this time accompanied by 17-year-old Marco, left for China immediately afterwards. It took the group three years to reach Khan's court. His appearance is described in Marco's journal, quote, He is neither tall nor short. His limbs are well formed, and in his whole figure there is a just proportion, which adds much grace to his countenance. His eyes are black and handsome, his nose is well shaped and prominent. Khan saw great potential in Marco. The boy had barely reached 20, and yet he could speak four languages fluently, and had mastered many skills that exceeded those of Khan's own servants. The emperor, taking favor on Marco, sent him on diplomatic assignments throughout China and the surrounding lands. Polo returned from these trips with fascinating observations and stories, which he told to Khan. Marco was amazed by the lifestyles of the people in Khan's kingdom. They were what he called civilized, helping those in need and accepting help with modesty. Another surprise to him was the use of paper money, which was much more convenient than the heavy metal coins that were still in use in Europe. Polo's other observations include the alligator, rhinoceros, coconut, and differences in the lifestyles of Europeans and the Chinese. All of these observations were written in a journal which he kept with him at all times. Khan was so impressed at Marco's determination and hard work that he decided to appoint him as an ambassador and governor of the trade city Yangzhou. Marco served there for three years. The Polo stayed in Khan's court for more than 17 years. They had requested return to Venice many times, but Khan was reluctant and unwilling. Finally, the Polos got their chance to leave. In 1291, Khan sent the three Polos to escort a Mongol princess to Persia to strengthen diplomatic relationships. The journey was hard and there were many diseases among the crew going with the escort. Of the 600 people leaving China, only Marco, Niccolo, Maffeo, and the princess arrived. Upon arrival, the king that the princess was to marry had already died. The princess was left in Persia, and the Polos made their way to Venice in 1295. The Polos told the people of Venice their extraordinary stories many times. A large majority of them had trouble believing the stunning reports of China. Since they did not accept the reports, Marco Polo invited everyone to a dinner. There, the three Polos dressed in the clothes of Chinese peasants. After the meal, the Polos opened their pockets to reveal hundreds of gems and riches that they had received in China. 
Though the people were impressed, most still doubted the Polo's accounts. Around 1297, a war between Venice and Genoa erupted. Polo was captain of a ship that had been captured. He and his men were imprisoned at the naval battle of Carzola. He spent many months there retelling the stories of his travels to prisoners. One man named Rusticello de Pisa, an Italian writer, was so intrigued by Polo's accounts that he offered to write a book on it. As Polo told his stories once again, Rusticello wrote the account. The book, which is to be the most famous of its time, was called Il Million. The book was read by almost all the literate people in Europe. It was translated into French, German, Spanish, and later, English. In it, the book told of the uses of coal, paper money, and a message relaying system similar to that of the Pony Express. This piece of work had opened up a whole new world of surprises to the people of Europe. Even after the publication of his book, some people still did not believe in his seemingly far-fetched tales. Polo was released from prison in 1299. He began a trade business with his father and uncle, but never left Venice again. The Polos became very wealthy and bought a large house in the center of Venice. Thirty years later, as Marco lay on his deathbed, a priest told him to take back his ridiculous stories of the East. Polo replied, I did not tell half of what I saw, for I knew that I would not be believed. Marco Polo, a man whose courage and determination motivated so many others to go and pursue their dreams, had huge influence on the way of life in Europe. He introduced objects and philosophies that would change the course of history forever. His book began the explorations of Vasco da Gama and Christopher Columbus. His actions in China left legacies in Europe. He was the father of the golden age of discovery. He was Marco Polo. <laughs>